Hello crypto boys and ghouls and welcome back to the channel Tales from the Cryptomancer where we feature content on play to earn games on the blockchain such as Splinterlands and today we're coming at you with a late night Friday video. I, I was compelled to, to record this and talk about uh, this because you know we, we came out uh, earlier this evening with a, some information that Gank had kind of uh, published and, and broadcast on his YouTube channel. I'm going to link that video in the description below. It's definitely something that I believe uh, everyone that plays Splinterlands, that is an investor in Splinterlands assets, should take a listen to. I'm also going to link a couple other videos for historic purposes that is relevant to this discussion tonight. Uh, our video talking about the current leaderboard problem, which was recorded over a month ago, and then also some background history around Steam and Hive and some of the um, the blockchain history around Splinterlands. Now, what I want to do is I don't want to reiterate some of the points that Gank brought up on his stream. Again, I, I recommend you listen to that, see the details here. I'm just going to cover it very quickly. Uh, what I guess the the challenge is and you can see on my screen here not picking on this individual specifically but I was just going through the battle chain Explorer on peak monsters just pulled up one individual that was uh, surrendering battles recently and you can see their history and you can see this history here um, all these battles where there's no monsters specified here these are all battles where this individual surrendered they played one battle here and they surrender, 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 surrender. Just surrender. That's what this account is doing, is just playing battles and surrendering. And if you look at the history here, you know, they're always surrendering to um, players that have a higher rank than them. And what the hypothesis that Gank is um, proposing on his uh, content, his channel, is that, you know, these are all part of the same bot farm. And when they see they're going against one of their own uh, colleagues or bots, they just surrender the win to them. So let's take a look at what might be happening here. This is a, a battle that we can replay here. And this battle was surrendered. And the winner here in this particular case received 0 0.044 um, DEC. Uh, as part of that surrender. So not a lot, but if you run this bot, you know, several times, uh, let's say you run it, you know, 30 times a minute for 24 hours a day, that's bleeding rewards uh, out of this uh, game into people that, uh, or bots that don't deserve it, right? So um, I'm not going to go into the specifics. What I would say is check out um, Gank's video uh, and then I would also uh, say do the, the history for yourself here. Come into the battle explorer in the battle chain and look here, we'll just do a refresh. All these battles where you don't see monsters here, these are all surrenders. Uh, anything without a monster is a battle that's being surrendered. There's a couple battles being played, but most of the battles on the battle chain in the last 60 seconds or so have been surrenders. The majority of the battles happening in the game are surrenders as you can see here which is obviously not what this game's about. This game isn't about bots just going in, surrendering, and you know handing out DC rewards like candy to players. So here's, I guess, where I wanted to steer the discussion towards because I don't want to necessarily hypothesize on how this problem can be fixed. Uh, the team, Switzerland's dev team, has already talked about what they want to do as far as anonymizing the uh, battles so you can't tell who you're playing against to cut back on this what i would say is you know that may be a short-term fix but the bot programs uh, have access to the blockchain and can probably deduce a way to figure out uh, if they're playing a friendly bot and still get around that uh, with uh, probably some some coding what i guess i would say is two things two takeaways that i want to talk about today one um, when we talk about one of the biggest risks to Splinterland's future, as far as assets appreciation, uh, new user growth, and the sustainability of this game, we cannot ignore 
bots, right? I know the Splinterlands dev team and Aggie has basically said, hey, bots are fine, we're not gonna ban them, there's not a problem here, nothing to see, carry on. What I would say is that is a somewhat, um, perhaps, um, uh, arrogant or um, possibly fatal uh, way of thinking because if we go back to some of the recent thoughts in the community with the reveal of the Carnage Titan airdrop with around 30 to 35,000 unique um, wallets getting that airdrop, if we say there's only, let's say, let's say there's 40,000 humans playing the game based on that as a rough estimate. It's probably less than that, honestly. But if we go into the dashboard here, uh, which is another tool within um, Peak Monsters, we can see the uh, daily active users right now is hovering around 400,000 players, uh, actually over 400,000 active players on a daily basis. Well, if only 40,000 or 10% of those are real humans, and 360,000 of those are bot accounts, that should worry any human out there listening to this video. And the reason for that is because just look at blockchain um, security, right? So when you have like a blockchain that's a, a proof of stake uh, blockchain, or even like with Bitcoin, which is a proof of work, right? You, you have security on the blockchain based on no one having a majority of the computing power or the stake of the blockchain to ensure fair use and security, right? So what we're seeing here is if the numbers of bots are 360,000 bots to 40,000 humans, um, that could be a technical exploit that could, in theory, destroy this game. Now, you're probably thinking, well, you're just sped, spreading FUD and, and fear and this is nonsense, right? Well. The only reason I bring this up and similar to Gank is because I have a, a, a vested interest and investment in this game being successful. And I want to make sure that if there are problems or weaknesses identified in the game, that we as a community identify them and look to have the dev team held accountable and shore those up. So when I say if there's 360,000 bots and there's 40,000 humans, uh, here's a potential scenario where this could be a problem in the future, right? Let's say the changes that they put into place, when I say they, the Splinterlands dev team puts into place today um, around anonymizing battles uh, does not work. And that bots continue to surrender and win trade and bleed rewards out of the game, um, un unfairly I would say, and also you know do win trading and take leaderboard spots, right? If that happens, um, what would the next course of action for the Splinterlands dev team possibly be? Well, one course of action could be they just say, hey, if you surrender a battle, no one gets rewards. The winner doesn't get rewards and neither does the surrender, right? And you say, okay, that seems like a, a fair solution, right? Move on and let that change go through. Well, if the dev team came up with a mechanic like that, what if the bot farms revolted or took it personal and said, hey, you know, we're done with this game. We're going to see it crash and burn. What could they do? Well, they could set all of their bots and band together and let's say 360,000 bots in the game would just go through and surrender every battle. 360,000 bots surrendering every battle. So no one that plays a bot, which is the majority of players in the game, in theory, would ever get any rewards. The game would grind to an immediate halt because people wouldn't necessarily play because they just keep getting surrendering bots and uh, they wouldn't get any rewards and it'd be a futile effort. So that right there, you can see how with bots outnumbering humans, how bots being a major piece of the game today, if not, um, I guess, held accountable for good behavior, uh, could be a very serious problem that could take the game hostage in the future. This is just one technical example of how bots could do that, but there could be many other scenarios in the future that could develop, that could certainly harm the game. So what do you do? Well, we've seen other games like Axies, you know, ban bots and um, you know, struggle with that a little bit. And um, honestly, 
probably the solution to this is what no one really wants to hear is you know have some kind of possibly capture or verification between every battle to ensure you're a human um, to to get around that perhaps but that being said um, I think what needs to be looked at seriously is a definition of terms of service for the game to hold bots and bot owners accountable. For example, if you're doing these surrenders and you're doing these win tradings and your account has a history of doing that, guess what? You're, you're violating terms of service in the game, the account's banned, spellbook's revoked, and the ability for that account to participate in ranked battles, tournaments, or any other uh, interaction on gameplay in the game would be locked out. Now, the assets in the game, as far as owned by the account, should still be able to be sold or transferred, uh, because those obviously don't belong to Splinterlands, but the ability to play the Splinterlands game uh, should be revoked at that point in time. But losing the account, losing the spellbook, uh, and having to force assets to move is not the end of the world for someone that's a bad actor uh, on the game. But I, I do think something needs to be looked at from a terms of service perspective and basically saying if you're a bot and you're doing things that should not be done, right? If you're win trading, if you're surrendering, if you're bleeding and extracting value from the economy in an unfair fashion that can't be replicated by humans, you should not be allowed to participate. Um, so, so that's, I know, a controversial stance, but I think for the ultimately the health of the game and the growth of the game and the sustainability of the game, something needs to be done. We cannot just turn a blind eye and say, everything goes, this is blockchain, this is crypto, it's the wild, wild west, have fun. Because at the end of the day, that's not gonna achieve mainstream adoption, that's not gonna be secure, and that's not gonna be sustainable. Now my second point that I want to bring up, and again, all this is for conversation, please hit me up in the comments below, uh, let me know if you think this is crazy or if this is something that should be talked about as a community because I do think it's relevant and I think there's not necessarily one solution or one answer but something needs to be done just like with tournaments you know we came together as a community and, and we're seeing good changes there we should look at, at the security of the game and look at bots and see how this can be addressed now the second point I want to make is the team has been talking about hiring right hiring developers hiring creatives hiring marketing and sales and, and all these folks. Well, one thing we haven't heard the team talk about necessarily is focused on a chief security officer. Um, it shouldn't take the community to come up and talk about the leaderboard problems and the, uh, the wind trading and the surrendering and the bot problems. Um, there should be someone at Splinterlands that is responsible and has a team specifically there to root out these issues on the blockchain and in the game security. And this is a key hire and someone that should be in place if they're not already in place today, especially when we're talking about rolling out new code with validators and governance and node licenses. All of a sudden, that opens up a lot of potential bugs and entryways for hackers and other security risks into the game. And I think, you know, we're, we, we have faith in the dev team that they know what they're doing, but at the same time, you know, we just tried to roll out a patch in the game to make the, uh, the users anonymous and it kind of broke the game, right? So if we can't do simple just game patch updates, is there any faith that we have 100% rock solid security when we roll out node governance, validators, and uh, licenses, right? So that's a whole new piece of code, whole new piece of technology. You're injecting it into the game. It's gonna be live and it could be compromised. And if it's compromised, what does that mean for your assets and my assets in the game? Well, I wanna make sure that it's been looked over with a fine tooth comb. Uh, I wanna make sure that somebody is in charge of that, has a history in the industry, we get audited and we get it double audited if necessary to make sure that we're good to go before launching that stuff. If we're not going to see land for maybe another year, I honestly, you know, I'm excited about nodes and node licenses, but I honestly don't want to see it into the game if it breaks the game and it causes the demise of the game. And I think it's something that seriously, you know, should be looked at if it already isn't being looked at at the Splinterlands dev team because 
you know, I understand they want to roll out stuff fast. And, you know, this is not necessarily something that the community is asking for when it comes to um, the node licenses and the validator nodes and stuff. I know it's something that needs to happen over time. But let's not rush it. Let's not have it done um, in a fashion that compromises the security of the game and the integrity of our assets in this game. So that's kind of what I wanted to discuss today. Again, uh, I think we need to have somebody in charge of, of evaluating these risks and understanding problems in the game that bots, uh, as an example, could uh, impose around game security. And let's make sure we have terms of service and enforce those terms of service, even if it's not necessarily pretty, right? No one's in an uproar over uh, Weird Beard injecting KYC into tournaments. Why? Because we want tournaments to be fair and we want um, people to be playing people that are essentially uh, verified and you know not able to cheat. No one should be offended by that and uh, it shouldn't cause uproar. I know it's not necessarily the crypto quote way, but it is going to guarantee a uh, safe and uh, level playing field for contestants in a esports field that wants to um, emerge and be reliable and trustworthy. The same thing should be said about other aspects of the game, and if that includes, uh, you know, reeling in bots and making them play by the same rules that you and I play by, then I'm all for that, and there shouldn't necessarily be uproar over that either. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. I was inspired a little bit by Gank's uh, video on YouTube earlier, and I wanted to come up with something that talked about similar topics that we should be aware of. So I hope this information has been beneficial, uh, maybe a cause for conversation in the community. And if so, smash the like button. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about uh, the bots, uh, the security of the game, and the potential future of this game moving forward. Until next time, keep stacking those stats. Oh, that's